There are a lot of minimalist artists out there. There's James Turrell, who played with the human perception of light and space. There's Agnes Martin, who used many lines. On the other hand, Calder used a single line. Rothko painted rectangles, a lot of rectangles. And Sarah used a single material to obstruct space. All of them are minimalists, creating art that focuses on basic elements, the use of repetition, monochromatic palettes, and geometry to convey message. But there's one artist in particular who resonated with me most. I am an artist. I photograph people, places, and weird things. In a 21st century world of lightning connections and far-flung feedback, I create. While social media is a platform that extends our perception of community and allows us to share ideas, I found that it can also corrupt individuality. How do I know this? Experience, personal feelings, my dependency on it sometimes for a feeling of self-worth. Let me explain. For me, social media can be described in a couple of ways. First, it's a method of networking and communication. We like others' posts and we comment our thoughts on the things that we see. We click, we swipe, we simulate relationships with other people by building an audience, our followings. On the other hand, social media is just media, photos and text and moving images, information that is being updated constantly, stuff that we post and share. What has been my dilemma for the past few years is how to intersect the two while remaining authentic to myself. And I have found someone who has already done that. Once again we are here in this historic room as the guests of the Prisker family and the trustees of Harvard University. This evening we honor Luis Barragan of Mexico. He has been called a poet among architects the artist among architects. That I had been chosen as the recipient of this prize for having devoted myself to architecture as a sublime act of poetic imagination. Consequently, I am only a symbol for all those who have been touched by the angel of beauty. Baragán won the Pritzker Architecture Prize, which is kind of like the Nobel Prize of Architecture, in 1980. In the words of the association, we are honoring Luis Baragán for his commitment to architecture as a sublime act of poetic imagination, a stoical acceptance of solitude as man's fate permeates his work. For Baragán, architecture is the form man gives to his life between two extremes, of beginning and end. From first reading this, I really didn't know what Baragán's poetic imagination was, so I ended up analyzing the entirety of his acceptance speech, trying to figure out what that means. From what I learned, there are eight tenets that guide Luis Baragán to create. Religion and myth, beauty, silence, solitude, serenity, joy, death, and gardens. But for me, only silence and solitude helped me figure out my dilemma with social media. The 20th century surrealism movement was born from Dadaism, originating in Paris before spreading to countries around the world, including Mexico. Surrealism employed images of dreams and fantasies through abstract, hyperbolic visuals to scrutinize reality. Salvador Dali was in Spain, Yves Tanguy was in France, René Magritte was in Belgium, and Frida Kahlo was in Mexico. In my opinion, surrealist art is often brutalist, over-articulated and gratuitous, overwhelming, puzzling. It is loud, and it demands attention. Baragán was silent. His works manifested solitude. 
He created space for the individual to find quiet, not art that calls heed of the outside world. He was not someone who feared isolation. I like to think of all of Luis's projects as cocoons. One has a sense of being several layers removed from the world outside. His designs encourage you to look out, up, and inward, but only through a series of deliberately framed views with nothing visible beyond the blue of the sky and the green of the surrounding trees. He isolates individual elements that you normally take for granted, like I mentioned before, the sky, and trees. He only agreed to design the Gallardi house because it surrounded a magnificent jacaranda tree, and light, which he plays with tandem to water. His accentuation of nature, this highlighting of these primal elements, dazes you, enough so that in order to process them you must stop, reflect, think and repose. It rouses a needed and often elusive moment of pause. We feel comfort and are inclined by this pause to self-reflect. We are in silence and solitude. I realize that Baragan's understanding and implementation of silence and solitude echoed within my own life. Just around the time when I was dealing with my inauthenticity on social media, one of my favorite artists uploaded a Medium post about choosing one of two paths in life, a path of shoulds versus a path of musts. She writes, Should is how others want us to show up in the world, how we're supposed to think, what we ought to say, what we should or shouldn't do. It's the vast array of expectations that others layer upon us. When we choose should, the journey is smooth, the risk is small. While must is who we are, what we believe, and what we do when we are alone with our truest, most authentic self. It's our instincts, our cravings and longings, the things and places and ideas we burn for, the intuition that swells up from somewhere deep inside of us. Must is what happens when we stop conforming to other people's ideals and start connecting to our own. Because when we choose must, we are no longer looking for inspiration out there. Instead, we are listening to our calling from within, from some luminous, mysterious place. After reading this, I responded with my own post. I think that this constant weighing between should and must not only relates to me, but to a lot of other teens my age. It's just this jumble of teenage feelings and worries and hormones and this persistent fear of being able to fit in, as we put it, that makes choosing either should or must so difficult. For Christmas later that year, my mom gave me one of her illustrations. With it came a note. Dear Izzy, I relate a lot to what you wrote about online feeling the need to fit in and deal with the hormones, worries, and fears of being a teen, as you said. I really appreciate that you took the time to write that post because it's hard and scary to honor our musts and shed the shoulds. I'll make you a deal. Do one thing that honors your musts and enjoy it fully. I'll do the same. Maybe doing it together makes it feel better. Let's fit into the musts, where fitting in doesn't even exist. Rock on. My should was upholding the expectations of social media. My must was overlooking that and the enticement of popularity in favor of authenticity. Like Baragan, El Luna urges solitude as a practice to achieve this. On page 111 of her book, she writes, Must needs solitude. Solitude is how we quiet the voices, the incessant chatter. It's how we create the necessary calm, empty spaces. Vision needs solitude. Leadership needs solitude. Courage needs solitude. Because when our choices evolve from an internal place of sure-footed, rooted knowing, we become resilient, emboldened, and focused. I had to choose must, and I did. In the cacophony of social media, sometimes you really just need to whisper.